After spending the night at Moorfield Campground inside Mesa Verde National Park, we drove further into the park to see some of the cliff dwelling overlooks before our scheduled tour time. Today we are at Mesa Verde National Park, our 17th national park. Let's go! Mesa Verde was established as a national park in 1906 and protects a number of ancient Pueblo cliff dwellings. All of the cliff dwellings can be viewed from overlooks, but most of them require a ticket to go inside. These tickets grant you access to a ranger-led tour who has information on the area. You can go through the cliff dwellings, but most of those tickets do sell out almost immediately after they go on sale. We're going to start out today with the Spruce Tree Overlook, which grants you access to view one of the more iconic cliff dwellings in the park. Uh, normally, there's self-guided tours you have access to, but those have been closed since 2015 due to crumbling cliff structures, high injury risk. And after that, we're going to do the Petroglyph Point Trail, which is a 2.2 mile loop, takes you along one of the mountains and you can see some of the petroglyphs left in the area. It's estimated that the Pueblo people moved into the area around 550 AD and built most of their cave dwellings in the early 1200s. They used the cliffs as a sort of overhanging shelter for their structures and fashioned most of their buildings out of carved sandstone brick. After using the cliff dwellings for less than 100 years, the Pueblo people moved out for an unknown reason, and by around 1300 AD, the cave dwellings were completely deserted. One interesting note about the ancient Pueblo people is that they domesticated turkeys. They used them for food and they used their feathers and they made tools out of their bones. We made it to the petroglyphs and that was one of the coolest trails we've done. It so cool. followed the sandstone ridge and because of the corrosive nature of sandstone, how it's easily eroded, there were just lots of little pits and borderline arches and little bubbles, caves, bluffs. It was awesome. And there was one spot where you can kind of see some leftover cave dwellings that you can't go into, but you don't need a tour to get right up to them to see. Mm -hmm. And the petroglyphs are way bigger than I thought they were going to be as well. Mm -hmm. I thought it would just be a couple carvings here and there. There's like this whole wall kind of behind us. You can see it there. There's a lot left behind. So I think the trail going back leads through the valley a little bit. Um, so it'll be a little bit more shaded. Uh, so we're going to head back and hit that now. So I misinterpreted the direction of the trail. It does not go down through the valley. It goes up along the rim of one of the mesas. So while it is pretty level, there's a lot of elevation from the petroglyphs to get up to that point. Our next trail, if you really even want to call it that, is a 0.1 mile out and back paved trail, but it leads to an overlook of the square tower house, which is supposed to be really cool. Our last stop on the Mesa Top Loop before heading to our tour at the Longhouse is the Sun Temple. What makes the Sun Temple really cool and unique is that it's one of the largest structures in Mesa Verde, and although it's built around the same time and associated with the nearby cliff dwellings, it's actually built on top of the mesa itself. And archaeologists aren't sure what it was used for since there's no evidence that there was a roof on it. They don't know if it was for ritualistic purposes or meeting purposes.
Another upside to stopping at Sun Temple right now is currently in July of 2022, the Cliff Palace Loop is closed. So this is the best view of Cliff Palace that you can get currently, and it's one of the two most iconic structures in the park next to the Spruce Tree House. We made it to Wetherill Mesa where our tour at the Longhouse cave dwelling is supposed to be. Once we got here, it looks like some storm clouds started rolling in. We're hoping the rain holds off. And I don't know if they would cancel the tour, if it started lightninging. Obviously, that's not somewhere you want to be, this type of elevation. So we're hoping everything works out and the weather behaves. But presuming it does, we're going to take the trail to Longhouse, which is a 1.1 mile paved trail. It does have some pretty steep elevation, but that is what we're supposed to take to meet up with where we'll take the tour at. We had such a good time at Mesa Verde. It was so amazing. What makes it so cool as a national park is because rather than preserving these pristine landscapes, it takes care of these ancient structures, but it's equally as impressive. Mm -hmm. We're really glad we were able to do the cave dwelling tour and that the weather held off. There's, to be able to go down in there and how well preserved they still are, it was awesome to see, way better than seeing them from a distance. Yes. And it was definitely worth having to hop on as soon as the tickets went on sale to go get them. Mm -hmm. So we have to leave a little bit earlier than we would have liked to, but we have a long drive ahead of us before we get to Rocky Mountain National Park tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 